This is Jess, Wes and our daughter Izzy. After selling our house and most of our possessions at the end of 2021, we've packed up our Van Bevan to tour Australia. We are Life is Vanderful. We're here at Palubi Beach. It is one of Shriki Bay's beautiful beaches, our first stop on the Air Peninsula. Come to Streaky Bay to grab a spot of, spot of lunch. Mm. Mm. Trying the oyster first. And chorizo. Chipotle and chorizo oyster. Eh? Mm. Oh. So dignified. Mm. Mm. Listening to you when you said go away. <laughs> so we're in Streaky Bay, and this model of a shark is to acknowledge the fact that back in 1990 Streaky Bay was the site of the largest uh, and biggest shark capture um, over five and a half meters long 1500 kilos um, and the shark was caught yeah 22 kilometers out to sea in these areas Beach camping at Streaky Bay. So we just left Streaky Bay and we're on our way to Murphy's Haystacks, uh, which is a bit of an oxymoron because they're not made of hay, they're made of stone. Uh, and just hoping this weather holds off or, or gets better. It's been pretty pretty rainy since we since we got here. So Murphy's Haystacks are on private property uh, and it's two dollars per person to go view them. Keep walking past the first Murphy's Haystacks. There's some more rock formations about two, three hundred meters later. And we've been lucky with the weather so far, but it changes pretty quickly around here because it's so windy. So we might get dumped on any moment.
really lucky with the weather. I think it rained once or twice while we were there, but it was a 30 second shower. And then for the rest of it, we had really nice sun. Um, so yeah, make sure you come and do the Murphy's Haystacks. The Murphy's Haystacks or just Murphy's just Haystacks? Murphy's Haystacks. Yeah, don't like the. Um, but it's only a two minute detour off the main road as you're, as you're traveling south or north um, on, the, on the coast road. So yeah, easy to get to and as I said before, it's $2 per person. And we also got some honey, so you can get honey if you want. Um, the farmer whose land it's the haystacks are on uh, makes honey, um, so it's $10. And we grab some of that for our travels because we don't have any left. driven down the coast and we've come to a place called Talia Caves and Woolshed Cave. A um, series of caves as the name suggests and rock pools here and the weather's fined up. Um, it was raining as you drove here then all of a sudden there's bright blue skies you wouldn't know that it's been been raining at all so walking down a series of stairs here to the caves and and some rocks and it looks um, it looks pretty magical to be honest so Izzy's asleep in the car, she's having a, a rare day nap, so Jess and I are taking turns to, to walk down these stairs and look at these rocks. Standing here on the rocks in the middle near Woolshed Cave and just shows you how powerful and how awesome Mother Nature is. With all this water and wind that's carved all these all these paths and grooves into the rocks and you can sort of stand right beside the waves as they come crashing in and just a little bit higher than the waves so I get get pretty close uh, but always got to keep an eye out for any any rogue sort of waves to make sure we don't get get wet but yeah this is a really really cool place and just so thankful that the weather's uh, weather's turned around. It was raining not 20 minutes ago, and it shows how strong and how uh, windy it is that all the clouds are blown away, and there's there's just blue sky around, and it's um, yeah, great place to be here. And this is a little further down the road called the Tub. A uh, big sinkhole here that has a small little slit where it goes straight out to, straight out to sea there. Uh, tide's not high enough for the water to come in but you can just make out the little hole there where the, where the water comes in into this sinkhole. There's supposed to be some really amazing rock pools just below me here, but I don't think the tide's right for it today. Um, and the weather's not really too great for taking a dip in the cold ocean either. Um, so we'll head off to the next spot now, which I think is going to be Coffin Bay, um, famous for its oyster farming. So on the way down the coast, we're stopping off at Colton Bakehouse, which is some wood-fired oven bread and treats. Okay. What do we get? So I got us some um, fruit buns, which look a bit hot cross bunnish, 
They no. smell amazing. Um, very sorry, bakery lady. They were eight dollars, and I had seven dollars in cash, so I put seven dollars in the honesty box. But still fairly, let's say we're 98% honest. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to having one with some tea. I just found an extra dollar, so I'm gonna go put it in the honesty box. <laughs> So this is Ellison Golf Club and this is the view from Ellison Golf Club and this is Bevan at Ellison Golf Club so we're camping we're camping here for the night um, with all these all these views and um, they've got yeah $10 deal you can camp here um, it's obviously unpowered and it's not there's no facilities to speak of um, but other campgrounds in the area are a similar price um, and the, well, the actual campgrounds themselves, if you want just an unpowered site there, it's $30. So $10 relative to that isn't, um, is pretty, is pretty cheap. So, um, and we get these amazing views looking out over the, over the bay. Morning from a very windy Elliston. We stayed here at the golf course last night and that was great accommodation as we mentioned. If not a little windy, up on top of the hill, on top of the perch, it was 50 km an hour winds last night, so that, that made it a bit, bit of fun. Um, we just come down, there's a little bit of a tourist drive here and go for a walk on these, on these paths around the area. Um, or just stop here and drive to um, look at some of these spectacular views. We're going to get going now and we're going to head down the road to uh, Coffin Bay so uh, that's our next next stop there and we'll stay there and then keep on going around and that's around the bottom of the peninsula and then we'll arc around and, and head to Port Lincoln after that. So we've made it to Coffin Bay uh, we're not camping here uh, we are riding our bikes here our bruised and battered bikes so just pulled over the car park here and now we're trying to convince this little one to go on a ride. Well, when I say convinced, she wants to go on the ride with the words coming out of her mouth, but her body language when she runs away says otherwise. So it's a little bit confusing at the moment. We got one boot on, Dad. One boot. Second boot. Second boot. It's riveting stuff. Everyone wants to know <laughs> if you're going to put the second boot on or not. Wow, she did it. I do we do it? Two boots, yay! <laughs> So we're in the very sleepy town of Coffin Bay. It's it's a lovely town. We're here in winter, spring. Um, I'm sure this place is um, amazing and fantastic in summer. There's lots of holiday villas, holiday houses here, and the population swells well above its its normal size in those summer months. Um, and yeah, nice walkways, lots of nice houses. Um, the Coffin Bay National Park's right next door, but. It's an incredibly windy and cold day where we are um, here at Coffin Bay today. So as nice as it is, we're going to skip town and head to the next next town on the list, which is Port Lincoln, which is the biggest biggest town on the on the Air Peninsula. Um, so we're going to head there. It's only 35 minutes away. Um, we've ridden our bikes down to a playground here, and now Jess has ridden hers back, uh, loading it onto Bevan, and then coming to meet us here. So this one can have a bit more playing time in the playground and also sorting through all the nuts to pick all the sultanas out of it at the moment and fighting off the seagulls. Seagulls. What noise do seagulls make? <laughs> and unlike its name suggests, Coffer Bay's got nothing to do with coffins or death anything like that. It's the person it was named after. 
um, but it's mostly famous for being a tourist destination and also it's oysters so a lot of a lot of oyster oh, shucking yeah. goes on here you do oyster tours um, and this whole bay where it's situated um, there's lots of oyster oyster farms here we already had oysters the other day in Shrieky Bay so we are definitely not rich enough with van life to be having oysters every second day so uh, that is not on the cards while we're here so it's amazing having all these natural Australian animals here just in the wild got the kangaroos the emus but also means lots of kangaroo and emu poos and throw in a few dog owners that don't clean up after their dogs and this place is like a minefield and Izzy's just stepped in it so um, Dad Judy just got all the poo out of Izzy's boots fun so I think we've used up all our luck with the weather Okay, it's not raining, but it is bitterly icy cold here in Port Lincoln. Is he very demanding? She wanted the hungry caterpillar book and a honey sandwich. We just come back to Bevan um, to make some honey sandwiches for her and read the book. Now he wasn't hungry anymore. We're at the top of an old windmill in Port Lincoln, which is just overlooking where we were playing this morning down by the beach and the jetty and the playground. Um, it's a really nice town, Port Lincoln, as was Coffin Bay, which is where we were yesterday. But we just feel that in winter, um, it's not really <laughs> the right time to be here, which is probably pretty obvious. It's really based around fishing, water sports, um, going out doing the cage dives with the sharks which is something that I was really keen to do and then I found out that it's about a three hour boat ride each way um, to get out deep enough to go see them and, and you're also not guaranteed and and you don't get all your money back and it's about 500 and something dollars to do that um, and I get a bit seasick on rough seas so so I thought we'd give that one a miss but yeah, if you're not really into fishing, um, if it's too cold to swim, then there's really not too much to do. Um, so we're kind of just gonna spend the rest of the afternoon here and then we'll start cruising um, back up to the top of the peninsula towards Wyala. And then we'll make our way um, yeah, through South Australia back to a few places like Clare Valley and um, Barossa Valley and do some nice things like trying more wine. Um, but yeah, I think if you were to come here in summer, it would be really, really enjoyable. Um, but it just didn't work out that way for us on the trip. So we've driven 30 minutes north up the road to Tumbley Bay and we're staying just across the road from this beach and the weather's, weather's been kind to us and it's been blue skies and we're just going for a walk along the beach with Izzy and doing her favourite thing, collecting shells. Okay? Yeah, okay mate? Okay. So Jess and I might have gone on a little bit about how cold it is here. <laughs> On the Air Peninsula and that's that's obviously nothing to do with the area that's just a uh, time of year that we've decided to come down here to complete our lap um, not much we can really do about it um, it's lovely to be down here in summer but then we miss out on the other parts um, and the main part of our trip was to be up north uh, in winter 
um, to get that done and, and spend winter up top, which we, which we did successfully. One of the positives of being down here is just how cheap the accommodation is. Um, powered and unpowered, we've come across really good, good quality sites that are, that are cheap and probably none more so than where we um, stayed last night um, in Tumby Bay, a little, little four, four berth um, campground uh, run by the CWA here of all people and um, you got your own ensuite bathroom, ensuite shower and there's only four sites and it was, yeah, it was pretty, pretty cheap so um, that worked out well and now we're doing um, some laundry, exciting thing to do on a Sunday because uh, it's, as we said, it's been a bit wet here. Um, it's also at the campground we're at, it's free, free washing machine, um, but no dryer. We put our clothes up last night to dry, but it's, it's so cold they, they didn't really dry, so just putting the clothes on at the in-town laundromat. Um, and now we're just walking around town, and this town's got heaps of street art, so we've seen that a lot throughout these country towns in Australia. Some brilliant street art, and this place in Tumby Bay has um, just about on every corner you can't you can't walk 500 meters or 100 meters even without seeing some some art so just gonna have a wander around while we're waiting for 15 minutes on the dry cycle uh, for all our clothes so there we go So we have made it to Whaler, the last stop on our tour of the Eyre Peninsula, and we're here at Whaler Foreshore with its two-tone beach, and more specifically we're walking to the jetty, uh, which is a bit unique in its shape. So we'll get the drone up and let you have a look at what the what the shape is of the of the drone. And this will probably be our last last sort of full day here on the Eyre Peninsula before we head sort of inland, if you like, towards Adelaide. Uh, and probably going to the Barossa Valley next because we missed that the first time round. Um, so that's, that's next in our hit list after this. So here's the jetty. It doesn't look like much from this angle. Let's check it out from up above. 